Aaron Dreger, NHL Insider, on Tuesdays is a presentation of Cartwright Jewelers, and he joins us on the phone line today. Uh, we've got to be short but sweet here, Dregs, but first, yeah. on the coaching carousel, your understanding that Willie Desjardins is a candidate in Dallas, do you know how strong a candidate he is based on his uh, history with that franchise? Well, yeah, I, I, my sense is that he's a strong candidate, but yeah, I should qualify that. You know, I, I listed the three candidates that I was told uh, are top candidates, and Willie is among them. Uh, Jared Gallant is another, and Ken Hitchcock has been widely speculated. But um, since that point, uh, it's also come to my attention, while Willie has uh, full permission from the Vancouver Canucks to talk to anyone who has interest in uh, in his joining them on the coaching ranks, um, there hasn't been contact made just yet. But uh, my sources uh, indicate that the Dallas Stars most definitely consider him to be uh, a good candidate, so we'll see where it goes. Do you know if turnabout is fair play, if Lindy Ruff would get any uh, consideration here? <laughs> well, I'm thinking, yes, he'd get some consideration. But, Matt, the only thing that, that kind of is curious to me, specific to Lindy Ruff, is Lindy is a wily old veteran coach, right? And... You know, there was an amicable split. That's what it is in Dallas. Not dissimilar to what Todd McCollum went through when he left San Jose to jump to the Edmonton Oilers. I wonder if Lindy Ruff has or had something in his back pocket. And wow. and I'm not suggesting it's Vancouver, but... Is that Vegas, if, if, Dregs? Is that? it Vegas? Is it Vegas with his hockey Canada yeah. uh, experience at George McPhee and all that? It, and, I, I, and I can't dismiss that either. It just... This is my gut telling me that, you know, again, an experienced coach like Lindy probably isn't going to, you know, leave an established organization uh, where there at least was some discussion on a contract extension, you know, unless he's pretty confident that he's got a real nice landing spot. And then it could be Vegas, and maybe ultimately it turns into Vancouver, but it just seems like there's more to the Lindy Ruff story for me. So what's your podium look like for Vancouver candidacies then? Uh, well, for me, it's Travis Green. And, on all, th- and on all three steps of the podium? Yeah. yeah. I, well, look, I mean, um, I, I, I'm assuming that the people that I talk to believe that Travis Green is uh, more than ready to be an NHL head coach. No question about that. And there's also a greater assumption that, you know, if, if it's not in Vancouver, then potentially it's, it's going to be somewhere else. So I'd be... I'd be surprised if Green doesn't get the opportunity to be the next head coach of the Vancouver Canucks. But, you know, again, you know, maybe Trevor Linden and Jim Benning have, have something else up their sleeve. And there's been coaches uh, who perhaps are, are now surprisingly unemployed. Lindy Ruff isn't among them, but, you know, there's a coach with experience they might have interest in. Maybe Daryl Sutter, although that seems like a bit of a stretch. What we all know here is that Vancouver is going through at least a renovation, if not that dreaded R word, rebuild. And I also know that uh, Travis Green is terrific when it comes to developing younger players. So if the Canucks aren't going to take advantage of Travis Green, then somebody else will. One name I haven't heard bandied about with regards to any of these openings, perhaps you tell me because he's waiting for Quebec City to happen in however many years' time, but will Patrick Waugh get consideration anytime soon from anybody? Probably not, um, and, and that's not to say that he shouldn't. But, yeah, I, I think that you know there's the belief that uh, you know if or when Quebec City ends up in the National Hockey League, and it's still a big if if you ask the powers that be at the NHL, that he would have some association with that organization. Um, and, and look, Patrick is also a bit of a galvanizing personality, isn't he? You know, he left the Colorado Avalanche because he knew that team wasn't going to be very good, and I think he knew that there wasn't going to be considerable steps made to make that team better. And I know he didn't love the Ryan O'Reilly trade last summer to the Buffalo Sabres. No. So, you know, when you've got a guy as historic as uh, Patrick Wise to the game, <clears throat> you know, some organizations might shy away from that kind of larger-than-life personality. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate this. We'll catch up next Tuesday, my friend. Okay, guys.